This is one of those midweek mashups that I just put bits and bobs together. But first, a kind TA supporter and his father donated some bait to me. Did I want it? Oh, did I want it? Is the Pope Catholic? Well, quite an exciting trip today, guys. I'm going to, I'm going to get some fish, but not on the end of a rotten line. One of our supporters from uh, TA Fishing has offered to give me his freezer clear out of bait. So, I've got a limited number of uh, freezer packs and boxes. I'm going to be going, hopefully, to pick these up. Got an old polystyrene one where you get, get crabs on that end. What a good job, I never threw it away. I must have had it 10 years. So I've loaded up the car, I'm going over to Horsham and hopefully come back and show you guys all the goodies I've got. I'm so excited, it's almost like fishing. Whew. So I got back from Horsham, sitting in traffic queues. Unbelievable amount of traffic, it's holiday time, isn't it? It's peak summer, it's blazing. Third, I measured going along 60 miles an hour, windows open, 31 degrees. That's hot. So I've got the fish in the freezer, hopefully. But there's some weird stuff in there, guys. Now, the story was a great thanks to John and his dad, who aren't presumably fishing as much. Are they? I think John had sold his boat and was looking for another one. They're not going to use the bait. Would I like it? Rather than just dump it, I said, happy days, send it my way. Worst case scenario, it gets used for chopping up and chum. But no, some of it's some really unusual bait. I'll get them out one by one and show you. Worth knowing about. I had to go in and get changed and have a shower. I just so... Sweating in the car in traffic. Here's one you don't see every day. I don't know what they are. It looks like that top one there. Listen, don't tell Wayne. Don't tell Wayne to go mad. I could tell. I could pull this out and tell him I caught it. It's a red mullet. So there's a red mullet. I have absolutely no idea whether it's any good for bait or not. But it's going on the hook. Some giant size. It's called foreign peeler crabs. They are some nice big foreign peeler crabs which I shall cut in half and use probably for a smooth hound. Small squid, frozen solid. I'm not sure whether this is what I think Wayne used to call a party squid, did he this size? Um, squid's quite expensive over here now, so even though it's a half a packet, that, that there is an ideal size for breaking off. And don't forget if it's frozen, I put it I did, usually over my vise and clump it with a hammer, a coal hammer, break it apart, and generally they break along the lines that the fish are frozen. Uh, John and his dad had his baits, all vac packs, all vacuum packs, so I've got some mackerel there as well. I was just clearing all my fish out. I don't even know these look like about, see if I can get one out, I think they smell, there's a pack on there, there, it's dried out, it's still a bait, it can go for chum, it can go float fishing, it can go pike fishing in fresh water, so there's some smelt there, but they're quite big ones, so they would all go for bait and or chum, whatever, wait till you see this one. What about these then people, eh? What about those? I'm calling them European Barracuda. They've had the tails chopped off. Now there's a small Barracuda. Look, there's a general giant Barracuda. I caught loads of those. I've seen them over 50 pounds, 51 pounds, which weighed in one of our competitions once in Kenya. Wow, what a fish that was. It could take your arm off, honestly. But they also get a very small Barracuda. We get like the European ones and there's one called, very similar to this, called a Senet, S-E-N-N-E-T, and I've caught those over in Bermuda when I used to go over there marlin fishing. I go shore fishing as well uh, for what they call Bermuda chub. It's like a black bream, unbelievable scrappers, bone fish in the shallows, obviously barracuda on tubulars, and we would catch on strip baits Senet, which are about the same size as these. Now, there's a story here. Believe it or believe it not, it's entirely up to you. I'm out fishing with Wayne, off Falmouth, <clears throat> I don't know what we were, 10, 12, 14, 16 miles out. We were blue shark fishing a few years ago in High Sea Drifter. Too many years ago when I think about it. We both saw at the same time a scattering of mackerel with a strange fish, 
chasing right out of the water like porpoises jumping after them. I knew what they were in my mind. I said, Wayne, they are European barracuda. Wayne since looked them up, I have caught European barracuda, you know, like this big. And that's what was chasing the fish. And these are the same shape as those European barracuda, the ones we saw about two feet long. That's off Falmouth, I forget when it was, August or September, no word of a lie. If you don't want to believe we've seen barracuda off the coast of England, don't worry about it. Me and Wayne know what we saw. That's going to be used. And I can tell you now, one of the best shark baits ever, ever, is barracuda. Ask any of the professional Florida Keys shark fishermen, a half chunk head of barracuda. It drives tiger sharks, bull sharks crazy. Could drive my wife crazy if they thaw out. Well. Packs and packs of these. These are frozen. Oh, no, yes, they're in a freezer ground, so they would be frozen. These are North Sea herrings. Now, if you remember many years ago, the older ones amongst you, remember there was a massive bluefin tuna fishery up off the North Sea. We used to go out and catch them. I think the biggest was 850 something pounds um, caught on one line. Um, then they outfished all the Bayfish or the herrings, and that was the end of that good night. The bluefin tuna are coming back now, eating everything around the coastline. Where did they get to the North Sea? I don't honestly know, but I've got some herring there as well. Loads of herring. They're good. They're good conger baits as well. A lot of oil in them. Very good shark baits. Some more. I think they're giant smell. I don't know. Are they giant smell? I've got my fingers on uh, with gloves. I don't want to taint the fish. Oh, yeah, for that guy that wrote in, yeah, I've got my carp care kit. I've got my smelt care kit for this. Mm -hmm. Dream on. In here, highly unrecognisable at the moment, but I think I look like big longs or something like that or smelts and you can use these pike fishing smelt is a really good pike bait I'll go pike fishing hopefully hopefully in a couple of uh, days let's see if I can pull anything off the river There's a big one here what they do Johnny's dad used to go sea fishing down off Chichester do really well in the summer and in, in the winter they would go pike fishing up on the Norfolk Broads and they brought back some dead baits, I guess it just expired up there. Big ones, looks like, I can't tell if it's a roach and rat, but they're big ones. So I don't use big pike baits, but I envisage cutting sections up of those and use them at somewhere like Berry Hill Fisheries for Zander or in this new stretch of river I'm going to be fishing, hopefully, and chunk it up for giant freshwater eels. Loads and loads and loads of mackerel, loads of mackerel. One of these they found dead floating. A pike. Now, there's nothing a big pike likes eating better than a small pike. That's in a lot of the old books, I mean 100 year old books. So, not for me, I'll tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to catch a predator on a predator. I'd like to catch a taupe or a shark on a frozen pike like that. Obviously, if you find anything floating around dead, it's relatively fresh, bug it in the freezer. One of the best baits in Essex for taupe. A freshwater eel. Again, all vacuum packed. I've used sections of these for giant sturgeon. Well over £100 over in the Fraser River, British Columbia. They call them over there an ooligan, which is a sort of like a lamprey type eel, I think. So I've got eels as well. I've got so much bait here, it's unbelievable. These guys really take their pie fishing seriously. I don't know what these are, but do they look like one's a bream? I don't even know what the other one is. Maybe two bream. And they were saying, um, John was telling me, they went to fish chew, he had one about nine pounds, 
His mate had one about 30 or 31 pounds on one of those barracuda. Something different there for the guys that go pike fishing at you. Don't try the same old baits, try a different bait. And he got a 30-31 out of it. And finally for our repack it, this is a sort of bait I use sea fishing. You can fish that, split that chunk down the middle for sharks, blue sharks, or cut strips in it, and you've probably seen if you watch our boat fishing films, other species called conga, bullhus, dogs, rays, they love a piece of rainbow trout. So there you go people, I'm going to pack this stuff back in, thanks again John for all this bait, it will go to a good cause, it will be going back in the water, hopefully with a hook in it. Well, there's no excuse for me not to go fishing now, because I've now got a freezer full of sea fishing baits, and some pipe ones as well. Now, it's sort of garden time, and I wish I had done this earlier, and I didn't. I should have made some of Mike's secret plant food, because if you remember a year or so ago, Mike made some of this stuff up. It is disgusting, but boy, does it make the flowers grow. Uh, see, you've got some good uh, hydrangeas coming up here now. When we were kids, we used to be told, I think it was treat them with copper sulphate. I think to bring out the colour, anybody can tell us about that. Huge bush going to come up. It's quite mature, and, this one. Isn't it? And this one's, I think, sort of semi-early, but the, the product that really caught my eye, and it wasn't just the burgers on his barbecue. <laughs> it was the amazing flowers he's got. It's like they've been absolutely force-fed, I can't tell you. They're on hormones. steroids, yeah. He's going to tell us what we, he's okay. been using. Okay. So what I was struck by were these. I'm going to call them petunias, Mike, yeah? Yeah, petunias, yeah, petunias, a bit of a mixture. They're really, really up and they're credibly bushy, which is how they should be. Obviously, you deadhead, you put off the deadheads like that. But it looks like they've been fed with some sort of feed. And he tells me <laughs> he's been using the secret summer sat special. <laughs> I'm telling you, the smell off this it's when I go fishing yeah. is un. Beep. Real. It is Mike, bad. let's go to the potting shed okay. and you tell us what exactly is in here that gets you flowers like this. So this is my secret mix. It's in a wine bottle. I have a few as well down here, but this bottle shows it a bit better, the colour. Um, so what it is, it, well, it stinks, doesn't it, that is? I mean, I can only describe it as sewage, horse, horse piss. Really, that's it's that's pretty. It's, it's a, pretty bad. It's after nine o'clock. So apologies watershed. for those. Yeah, the watershed. But that's what you get um, <laughs> when you have to a make bad night. this. To make this, what I did is you get a load of stinging nettles early spring. You get the younger shoots with gloves. Pull off all the leaves of the stinging nettles, and you want about a bunch of that much. Then you wrap it into a, a towel, kind of like a, a kitchen towel. Wrap it in a towel and then tie it up with a knot at the top. Tie that knot to a long stick. So essentially you've got nettles in a towel, a long stick, and then hang that over a bucket. So in a bucket, drop, drop it in the bucket, and then the stick is stopping the nettles sinking to the bottom. You leave that in a bucket for two weeks. After one week, you just stir it a bit. You'll start to smell it after one week. After two weeks, it will stink when you stir it. Decanter it down into this, and this is almost like pure feed kind of like your miracle grow but it's homemade so it's really really strong what you do is pour that into like a 10 liter uh, watering can or five liter watering can fill your watering can up to the top and then go watering your plants with it before they flower it needs to be just before they flower and that's what makes them go like they're on steroids and just come out with all sorts of colors and grow really strong i use it on my tomato plants as well but yeah, nettle feed, pretty much. It's a very old school technique and it saves a lot of money and it's quite fun to make and it just stinks. And you got a candidate from the first of the potato harvest, I understand. I do have some potatoes here as well. These are these are my main crops. I've just kept them in the shed in the dark. But it looks like the blight didn't get to them, you know, Dad. They look alright, don't they? I think the blight hasn't got to these. Got a bit of light on that one, I Well, think. that got the green and that's where I kept it in the shed where there's still a bit of light in the shed. I'd normally store these in a lot darker. No, are you going to eat those or are you going to let them run to seed and then use them for planting? Uh, I might chit these. Yeah. And I say chit as in C-H-I-T. Yeah. Not the other way. YouTube will probably demonetise that. But I'm going to chit these ones. That's probably a good size to chit and then uh, use them next year and see if we can grow some main crop. These are British Queen 
And then the second, the main crop ones, I've got uh, Maris Pipers. You like the Maris Pipers, don't you? I like the Maris Pipers. I like yeah. the stuff in the bottle. Yeah, there's another bigger one, actually. That's a better one. It's got a bit green, that, from the light, so I probably won't eat that. But, yeah, I'll give you a bottle or two of these, Dad. You can have a go with them and yeah, with a so face mask. Well, I mean, it's unbelievable smell. There's no question yeah. it's unbelievable smell. So thanks for showing yourself. That's all right. And thanks for the barbecue. And hopefully we'll get fishing sometime. Hopefully. Plants do need food, and eventually... You'll have used everything up, won't you? You will have used everything up out in that soil. So I'm hoping, if I put a bit of decent compost in here, that um, we get a good show of flowers. A good show of flowers equals happy wife equals graham fishing. It's a plan. It's a cunning plan, Baldrick. I have a cunning plan. It involves planting turnips. don't actually like using all compost because it's sort of peat, well it's peat, so basically that's it, peat, and it uh, tends to dry out quite a lot. And this gets full sun, so I'm going to mix it all up together. Because a lot of the plant roots don't even get down the bottom here. You can also buy fertiliser stuff, you know. I think they call it miracle Grow. they call it, that's really good. And you water them like, I don't know, once a week or whatever they say. And that does help give your plants some food. And also, I quite like mixing all the soil. Puts a bit more oxygen into it rather than it's been compacted for a couple of years. So that's a good mix. And then take it all little shoots like that. You too can have a shovel that weighs 14 pounds because you haven't got the time to scrub all the concrete off it. You can actually clean your shovels with a grinder, an angle grinder, on its side. That's probably going to be one of the other jobs. One of the many, rearing its head. There was a board along here that's almost a guaranteed broken ankle. I think it's this one. That one there. It's got to come up. Rotten. That is Run on one side. Yes, sir. One rotten board. So that's got to be replaced. Possibly tomorrow, I feel. Might even have this decking all the way up. So you can see a huge amount of staining to do. Because when I look at the vastness of this area we call Kenya Corner, it makes me wonder why did I have such a big piece of decking? What was possessing me? When we first took the property over, this tree here, guys, I, I cut down with an axe with Mike, way, way up here it was, I don't know, 50, 50 feet. Drove the car around the back over there, tied a rope from the tow hitch to the top of the tree, or not quite the top of the tree, three quarters of the way, halfway up the tree, I suppose didn't measure the amount it falls over and then he had the tree on top of the car pulling it down and we axed that and then I got a guy to come in and trim it off level it put the poison holes in it as you can see so I'm now looking towards summer if this is stained out we used to go to Kenya quite a lot and I figure if I stain this up I'll put my bed chairs back in there pick the table back in there and it, basically I had this here as a screen while the outside grew if that makes sense and this now over the years is growing up so when all this falls down I'll have the natural bamboos there as a screen which I can trim and that keeps the wind off which makes it lovely and warm but for the moment I've been half an hour brushing and now I've got to start staining and I haven't got that much stain left oh well onwards and upwards or downwards downwards right kneeling pads at my age need something where to start? Upwind, I figure. Okay. Now, I made a mistake, all you DIYers. I bought expensive stain to go on this, right? 
like a varnish stain you can't see it here this is obviously treated decking for people that know the DIY but for some reason they said it lasts five years it doesn't last five years not here as you can see here these bits come off it that's where the varnish goes in the cracks and dries and you can actually if I show you some just for other decking people there okay see that there it peels up look like this so it seals only the top but when it cracks it doesn't seal does it so you want something that soaks in so I'm just using a wood type color look you can just spend your life peeling these bits off so that was expensive stuff about 50 bucks a can that doesn't work so for decking you just get decking stain but I thought I'd be clever and for about three years bought the expensive varnish which you know cracks and peels and whatever and it didn't work so now I'm just using look it's everywhere down there I'm just using regular stain now that's probably what I should have used in the years ago is it going to cover how much have I got now you can spray I've got the spray I have actually got the can to spray stuff like this with but you have to use a different mixture to spray with it's a totally different mix and I don't like it I don't like it and it's quite an expensive way of doing it and the other thing is anybody who does paint or decorate we know you and you're getting a bit tight for paint you want to stretch it or pull it you know just to get get it to go a little bit farther or further depending which country you come from then you can't do that whereas with a paintbrush I can put that there look I can leave it I can leave it lovely and thick like that or I can dab the edge of the brush and I can stretch that wipe the brushes brush this way to give me a surplus of stain I can pinch a little bit more so it can make it go a lot farther than if I just sprayed it it's quite an expensive way of doing it so I stopped spraying now plus the other thing is the nozzle keeps getting blocked you've only got to stop for five minutes not even even to think of considering having a cup of tea the nozzle blocks and that's the end of that you've got to wash it all out it's just hassle so for me personally I know it might be handy for fencing perhaps I just end up doing it the long way around like this but hopefully hopefully I'm going to have enough to get this done then I'm going to get the the summer items in here for the summer garden dinner party set you know and uh, I'll be able to put a couple of bed chairs in there and uh, tables and enjoy a pina colada it's what my grandfather says hungry wood boy it's soaking up I used to get this when we used to do furniture buy furniture sand it down and generally the first coat sort of soaks it really sucks it up right people leave me to it I'll soldier on here for a while I'll get back to you in about two hours well as you see I've cracked on I've done not quite three about two-thirds of it now I've got backache now but it's colored it all up pretty well my knees have gone as they do when you get older despite having the pads and you can see that's what that's what I was staining there all the white bits on it and that's how it's come up so pretty pleased with it but I just have a little rest before I finish off I've done pretty good with the cosmos flowers this year as you know those who follow us the veggies I didn't do any veg at all this year done the flowers some have been good and some have been not so good but hey ho it's been some kind of weird summer hasn't it I'm not even sure it's a summer at all anyway let's keep fingers crossed late well late summer early autumn even into October that can be quite good and good fishing we get some nice days cold nights but it can be good now then I go out night fishing, I've done quite a bit, carp fishing, I notice there's not many mosquitoes about. I've got the occasional one when I'm in a sleeping bag, you hear them, and one of those really annoying, but not too bad that I need to put, you know, stuff all over me to keep them off. However, something was swanning around in my uh, garage and workshop, and it was big, and it definitely would have given me a sting. Hopefully, one of you experts out there can tell us, what is it? It is absolutely immense. I don't know if you can see that there. I'm going to go in zoom in really close. It's enormous. You could hear it coming through the garden from like 30 yards away. 
He's twitching, which is just nerves. I certainly hope he doesn't come to life. Is that the African Hornet? And more important, is this bubbling out here where the sting is? There. Is that the actual sting juice that would be good? He's not alive because he's had a bit of a crunching. It is enormous. If you straighten it out, it's absolutely huge. So people out there tell us, is this the African Hornet or a standard Hornet? I'm just going to use a tape measure carefully. So it's straightened out, that is probably four centimetres long. It's all curled up there and it's already three centimetres long. It is certainly a nasty looking critter and I'm guessing loaded with poison and stuff. I still got that down as some kind of giant killer African hornet or something. If you strained it out, it's like big and nasty with eyes like the laser guided telescopes. Anyway, luckily I had a laser guided hand that popped it one and that's how I come on photographing it. I am not about to photograph a live one that close with the camera lens. Talking of things that sting and bite and kick and whatever, I put the trail cam out and um, put some trout pellets down across the lawn. Hey ho, what comes along but? Well, there you go guys, I've got a twofer. Two foxes for one. I would never know that if I hadn't put the trail cam out. Anyway, thanks for watching these few clips. Hope it's provided a little bit of distraction for you um, through life's general problems that we all have. And that's why I put all these together, because it's just oddball stuff, a bit of fishy and a bit of whatever. We'll see you guys in the next film, and next one, hopefully, yes, plenty of fish in it.